started then. Um, okay, here I am. Okay, perfect. So um, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to continue on with our um, uh, investigation into reciprocal functions. Um, so I'll just do a, a couple of examples, and uh, I think we'll be almost ready to do some some homework on on this. So we'll, we'll see how we'll see how it goes today. If uh, if we get to a place where I think that we're ready for some um, you know individual work, then I'll I'll, uh, I'll assign some. Um, I think that next week we'll have another assignment, um, and. Uh, yeah, as for your last assignment, I still have not marked it, uh, so I apologize for the, the delay. Um, I, I had to prioritize um, the AP Calculus uh, uh, homework. I, I kind of dumped a whole bunch of homework on them. They had their final exam. Uh, they finished about half an hour ago, so um, I, I really wanted to make sure that I, I had given them some feedback, so I, I did have to prioritize their work uh, ahead of yours, um, but it, that's only because of, of uh, due dates and things like that. So uh, now I should be unrestricted to, to mark your homework um, or your, your assignment from, uh, I think it was about um, over a week ago. I think it was like last Friday that it was due. So um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get right on that. Uh, hopefully I can finish that by the end of the week. Um, and uh, yeah, you should get some, some good uh, feedback from that. Um, okay, so I guess I'm, I'm gonna try to stay away from, from the book for now because I, I wanna, I don't wanna just copy all the examples from the book because um, uh, you know, we should, we should be able to you know, do pretty much any, any kind of question that's thrown at us. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm, I'm gonna start off with uh, an example that I want you to try on your own. Uh, and I'm gonna give you, I think, three and a half minutes should do it. Yeah, we'll do three and a half minutes. So we're just gonna start today off with an example. And I would like you to graph, um, I want you to graph uh, the following, um, the reciprocal, the reciprocal of y equals, let's say, um, uh, let's do three x minus four. Okay, so that's the reciprocal that I, I, I think we should do. And um, so that's the reciprocal. Uh, I also want you to state um, all vertical and horizontal asymptotes, asymptotes. Okay, so um, my hint would be to graph this first. Okay, so that's my hint is to graph that first and then, so hint number two, then uh, graph single points at a time, single points at a time. Okay, uh, so let's see here. We'll do what did I say? Three and a half minutes. You know, maybe I think four minutes. It, it, this is a this is a you know it's a full question. So we'll give you four minutes to do it, uh, starting now.
two, one. Okay, time's up, folks. Okay, let's uh, let's do this one. I'm gonna try to do it very quickly because uh, I, I don't want to waste your time, right? You just spent four minutes doing this, so you don't need to see me talk about it for you know ten minutes. So I'm gonna quickly make a little graph here. Hopefully my graph is big enough. My graph here is just gonna be a one-to-one -one scale, right? Each one of these ticks is uh, one unit, so I'm not gonna bother writing out the units. So I'm gonna start off by graphing y equals 3x minus 4. So I'm gonna start off with a y-intercept, so that would be negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm gonna go over 3, uh, or sorry, uh, up, up 3 over 1, uh, up 3 over 1, right? Rise over run, rise over run, okay? And then I will connect the dots as best as I can. Bada boom, bada bang. Oh, it's a little crooked. You know what, I'm gonna try one more time. I know I'm, I'm trying not to waste your time here, but I still want it to look a little bit nice. That's good enough. Um, I'll just move this just a wee bit over because it's not quite exactly wrong. There we go, perfect. Okay, uh, so I've graphed this. This is the line y equals 3x minus 4. Okay, now I'm going to graph the reciprocal function, which is uh, where the graph is equal to zero, or sorry, where, where, the, where each point is the reciprocal of the other point. So I'm gonna start off with an easy one, um, negative one, one. So the reciprocal of, of negative one is negative one. Okay, so they share this point right here. It's a good, good place to start. Okay, um, let's try this next one. Let's try uh, uh, when x is equal to zero. Um, well, let's see, one over, uh, let's see here. So one, so this is the point one, two, three, four, negative four. So this gives me negative one quarter. So there we go, negative one quarter, all right? And then what you might notice here is that as we get really, really close over here, like in this direction, like as we get close to this point here, we're getting closer and closer and closer to zero, right? So we're getting closer and closer to uh, uh, zero, but we're in the negative side. So right over here, let me just choose red. Okay, right over here, we get a vertical asm, oops, that's not what I meant to do. We get a vertical asymptote right over here. So here's our vertical asymptote, okay? And the vertical asymptote, um, as was pointed out yesterday, uh, corresponds to the, um, the x-intercept, so wherever um, y is equal to zero, okay? So that means our, our graph is gonna look something like this, like that, okay? And, oh, you know what? We actually don't know where the horizontal asymptote is. So let's, let's maybe hold off on that for just one second. Um, so let's try uh, to graph another couple points. So let's try uh, this one over here. So uh, this is the point one, two. So when we get that, we get a half. So there's our point one half. Um, and again, for the same reason, we get sort of a, um, uh, you know, an asymptote, which, which makes us sort of go shooting up like in this direction. Uh, this next point here, over here, this is the point, uh, t uh, what is that, the point one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So this gives us one fifth. So here's one fifth all the way down there. And we're going something like this, like that, awesome. And this guy over here, now let's finish off this, oops, this horizontal asymptote right over here, okay, and we're done. So this is this is our graph over here. It looks very pretty. I, I really like the way these graphs look, and um, that's pretty much it. So, oh, I guess we should state our um, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So our vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote, is at the point x equals, well, where is this function uh, equal to zero? Like where's our original function equal to zero? Well, right at this point right over here, which is the point one third. So uh, when x is equal to, or sorry, not, not one third, four thirds, because here's one, two, three thirds. That's not very evenly spaced. One, two, three thirds. And then here's a, a, another third. And why are they thirds? Well, it's because the slope 
is three. So every time you go uh, up up one, you go over a third. So uh, our vertical asymptote is at x equals four thirds. If you wanted to do this with algebra, you could take this guy and um, and set it equal to zero. You could set y equal to zero. So you could say, okay, well, if, if y is equal to zero, what's x equal to? Well, you would set it up like this, 3x, and you'd say that x is equal to 4 thirds. So that's how you could do it with algebra if you wanted. And then the, um, the horizontal asymptotes, and I'll, I'll just quickly make those right here. Cha -cha -cha, very nice. Okay, the horizontal asymptote. Asymptote is at um, y equals zero. Okay, and uh, why would that be? Why do we have a, a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero? Well, it's because as our values over here get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, the reciprocal values become a, a, a fraction with a numerator of one and a denominator that is huge. So it's essentially a very, very small number, but they never actually become equal to zero. So that's our, our reciprocal function. Um, we have two asymptotes. We've got a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, a good question um, for now for now let's just let's just keep it where it is and um, I'll, I'll think about a way of using algebra to solve for the, uh, the horizontal asymptote um, I didn't prepare anything for today um, to find that um, so let me get back to you on that um, but that's that's a good good question how do we find the horizontal asymptote algebraically I mean for now we'll just are going to use our intuition that you know, as as these values get really, really big, um, they're getting closer and closer to zero, right? As you take the reciprocal, like the reciprocal of a really big number is a really small number that's very close to zero, right? Like as a number gets like, like take the number a million, right? The reciprocal of one million is a millionth, like one millionth. So one millionth is very small, very close to zero. So as our function grows really, really big, the, um, the reciprocal of it becomes very small, and very close to zero. Um, keeping in mind as well that whatever is positive stays positive, whatever is negative stays negative. Like the reciprocal of a positive number is still positive, but the reciprocal of a negative number is, is negative. So those are things that we have to keep in mind, okay? So I want to throw a, uh, a slightly more challenging one at you and we'll see how that one goes, okay? So I'll give you, um, this one I'm going to give you five full minutes to to go over this one because this one is is completely different than, than anything that we've done. And this one I want to do something similar to the book, but I don't want to copy the book exactly because I, I want to make sure that we're actually doing some of our own problems. Okay, here's a good one. <laughs> yeah, let's do... You know what, maybe we will actually do this one from the book. Uh, but you know what, maybe I'll just take one from the... Over here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, come on. Yeah, we'll just do this one. Okay, so here's your example, EG, and I'm going to give you five minutes to do this one. So graph the reciprocal. of y equals x squared minus four. <gasps> it's no longer a linear function that we're graphing the reciprocal of. I want the reciprocal of y equals x squared minus four. Okay, so I'm gonna give you five minutes to do this. An extra minute from the last one. 
Um, so again, start by graphing. Oh, and also I'm going to ask for, uh, also list the vertical asymptotes. And I'll, I'll say horizontal as well. Totes. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna list the vertical asymptotes, <coughs> excuse me, and the horizontal asymptotes. So uh, that's what we're doing. I'm gonna give you five minutes. Uh, remember, start by graphing y equals x squared minus four. So that's your first task. Luckily, this one's fairly easy to graph. There's there's not a whole lot to this one. Um, Give it a shot, go.
Okie dokie, that's enough. Okay, so uh, let's, again, I'm going to do this one fairly quickly. Um, so let me start off by making a nice little graph for us to play with. There we go. And... Okay, let's go. So uh, I'm going to start off by, by graphing y equals x squared minus 4. Uh, well, uh, x squared minus 4, that's equal to x minus 2 times x plus 2. It tells me that I've got um, a um, uh, x-intercepts at uh, positive and negative 2. Um, that also tells me where I can find the vertex, right? The vertex is going to be right smack dab between the, um, it's going to be right smack dab between the two x-intercepts. Um, that's not really a fact that we talked about too, too much, but I know that my, my vertex is going to be somewhere on the, uh, on the y-axis because it's going to be right in between the two x-intercepts, right? Because we have a lot of symmetry in quadratic functions, right? So the, the vertex will be right in between these two points like that. Okay, so the vertex will be on here. So let's figure out where that is. And I'm just going to graph this really quickly. Um, so that would happen when x is equal to 0. So 0 squared minus 4, that's equal to negative 4. So we've got a vertex at 0 uh, and negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So right over here. And I'm just going to sort of quickly graph this. So I go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. That makes sense. And then I'll go, I'll graph one more set of points. So over 3, up 9, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And there we have it. Okay, so there's our graph. And I will do my best to graph it accurately. Oh, my iPad moved. I actually have these gloves that I sometimes wear because if you draw on your iPad all day, like I do, your palms get sweaty because your iPad generates a lot of heat and these gloves make it nice and slidey so you, your fingers don't... It's a very uncomfortable feeling to have sweaty palms rub against glass. It's not very pleasant. Um, that's much better. Okay, so it's still not perfect but better. Uh, here, I'll do, I'll do this. Sometimes if, you're, if your dots don't line up perfectly, make the dot bigger. Okay, um, so that looks good to me. Um, so now let's, so this is, by the way, is y equals x squared minus 4. Okay, let's talk about, um, uh, what are we talking about next? Um, oh yes, the reciprocal part. Okay, so this one, I have two vertical asymptotes. Right, I've got one, one vertical asymptote right over here, because the reciprocal of zero does not exist, right? And one over here as well. So all of the x-intercepts of the original function are going to correspond to all the x-intercepts of the original function correspond to vertical asymptotes, right? Because those are the points we cannot we cannot graph a uh, you know we can't graph one over zero. Okay, uh, let's start with, with this center area right over here. Let's see what's going on over here. So uh, let's start off with uh, the point, uh, like let's start off with the vertex, and then what we'll do is we'll kind of do the reciprocal of this side, and then we'll just mirror it on that side, because we have some symmetry here. So whatever, whatever happens over here, there will be a mirror image on this side. So I'm gonna start off with a vertex. So that vertex, uh, is the point negative 4. So on, on the other hand, I've got uh, negative 1 quarter. And I think I should not use red. I'll use um, yellow. How about yellow? Okay, so I've got negative 1 quarter. There it is. So that's, that's that point. The next one over here that I've got, I'm going to focus my attention on this point right here. So this is the point negative 1 quarter third, or sorry, this is the point negative three, whose reciprocal is negative one third, which is just a little bit lower. I'm not doing a very good job of, of graphing these. Let me go a little bit more precise. So um, I got a half and then a quarter would be about right there. And then negative one third would be about 
right there. So they look really similar, but they're actually not. And while we're doing it, like I said, we'll do sort of the mirror image on that side. Okay, and then what's happening is you can you can kind of see that as, as we're getting closer and closer to the vertical asymptote, we're getting closer and closer to zero. So our, our numbers are gonna just shoot down like this. It's gonna get really, really negative, really, really fast, okay? So we're just gonna graph that. So this looks something like this. And we just get this nice little curvy line that gets very, very close to the vertical asymptote, but of course never touches it. Okay, so there's that portion. So the middle part is nice. Okay, now let's see what's going on over in this area. So I'll start off with the one point that I can write the reciprocal of. This is uh, the point nine, uh, which brings me down to one ninth. So that's, uh, that's like a little bit more than 0 0.1, right? So basically like right there, almost, almost right on the ground, but not, not actually touching, right? And then, uh, you know, as we get close to the vertical asymptote, it goes something like this. Beautiful, look at that. And I mean, one thing that you should think about is the intersection of these two lines. The intersection should be when the y value is equal to one, right? Because the reciprocal of one is one. So I think that my drawing was fairly accurate. It looks like their intersection, oopsies, that's not what I wanted to do. Their intersection is is right about at, at, at this point here, at, at one, right over here. So, so that looks good. And then uh, we've got a mirror image on the other side. Don't forget, I'm gonna draw a little arrow over here to signify that it keeps going on forever in that direction. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Bada boom, bada bang. Okie dokie. And there you have it. There is the reciprocal function of this quadratic. So we started off with a quadratic function, we graphed it, and then we wrote all of, oh, and then I forgot to do the, the horizontal asymptotes. So I've got a, a little thing to say about vertical, or sorry, horizontal asymptotes. Um, there we go. Okay, so I guess the thing that I have to say about horizontal asymptotes is that we don't actually have to worry about them. Um, I'm, I've just kind of, uh, you know, it's one of those, those topics that I can't help myself but to include, but it's not actually part of, of your curriculum, so we don't actually have to talk about horizontal asymptotes. So I, I'm not going to be, from this point forward, I'm not gonna be assessing you on horizontal asymptotes. Uh, that's a topic that you'll be learning more about next year. In the meantime, uh, if, if we want to know like where the, uh, the horizontal asymptotes lie, pretty much for all of the questions that we're going to be dealing with, they lie on the, uh, the x-axis. Um, but that's because our functions are, are just are increasing on, on either end, and, and that's that. Um, some functions uh, that are reciprocals, they, they don't they don't go off towards infinity in one direction. So what I, what I mean by that is like our function, um, our function uh, x squared minus four, it has no limit, it has no upper bound. As, as we keep going off in this direction, x squared minus four is, just keeps on getting higher and higher and higher, right? There's no, there's no ceiling to this function, right? Which means that as we get further and further in this direction, the reciprocal of this, these big numbers are gonna be getting closer and closer to zero, right? They're gonna get closer and closer to zero. So for our functions, the, the, the horizontal asymptote is, is effectively always going to be at zero. But I'm sure you could imagine a different kind of function that looks something like this, right? That maybe, maybe it keeps on going on and on forever in that direction, right? And here's our x and y axis. Well, then the horizontal asymptote is gonna be the reciprocal of whatever this is, is approaching, right? Like maybe, maybe this does have a ceiling to it, right? And that ceiling, the reciprocal of that ceiling would be our new horizontal asymptote. So it might not be at uh, the x-axis, maybe it's like right over here, right? In any case, we're not, we're not gonna worry about horizontal asymptotes 
anymore. Okay, so I just I just included it because because I, I can't help myself sometimes. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're not going to worry about horizontal asymptotes. But just I, I hope that you can appreciate that they do exist and and get some kind of appreciation as as to how they correspond to the the vertical asymptotes that we've been graphing as well. So um, so yeah, these are these are the reciprocal functions uh, that uh, that we uh, we've looked at today. So let's see here. Um, so I, I think that that's that's actually all there is to it for chapter seven. So we we like blew through this chapter. This is the fastest um, chapter that we've been through all year. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that that we're we're doing okay. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end a few minutes early today. But what I want you to say for the exit slip um, is so for the exit slip today. The exit slip today. Exit slip. Okay. By the way, if you like, okay, I'm gonna go to my YouTube channel right now. This is it's super weird. Nope, not that YouTube channel. Um, studio. No. If I go to videos. Yeah. If you go through my videos, almost every single video thumbnail is the exit slip. It's really weird. Um, okay, so not for. Okay, I guess it's not every single one, but it's almost every single one. It's it's very strange. Exit slip. Exit slip. Exit slip. Exit slip. Exit slip. Exit slip. I wonder what I think is happening. Is my guess is that uh, a lot of people uh, uh, pause the video on the exit slip, which makes perfect sense, right? So it, it's probably the most popular frame. That's probably how YouTube um, does that. There's more than one what? Um, more than one, yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, oh, oh, more than one YouTube channel. No, no, I meant, I clicked the wrong link. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, of course I have my, my own YouTube account that's that's not a school related one, but I, I don't really post post too many videos on there. It's not like I, I have a YouTube presence or something like that. Um, uh, but yeah, so uh, my guess is that the way YouTube generates the thumbnail, I mean, I could go back and I could change the thumbnail myself. I do have that kind of privileges, but that, I mean, I don't want to have to do that every, every single day. Um, that's kind of annoying. That's the kind of work that I'm really not very good at. Um, so, so yeah, I think that what they do is they just look at the most popular frame because n people aren't watching the whole video through and I, and I don't expect them to watch every second, right? I mean, if you're watching this not live and I give you five minutes to do the example and you finish it in one minute, I don't expect you to sit there, right? Like that's what the, you, you know, the arrow keys, you can, you can fast forward through the, with the arrow keys. So in any case, I'm, I imagine that the exit slips are, um, the, the the most popular frame. Anyway, so the, for the exit slip today, what I want you to tell is um, uh, it's it's not a math related one. I, I want you just to tell me. Um, so how do you feel? Do you feel about chapter seven so far? Okay. So did we go too fast? Too fast. Uh, did we do enough problems? We do enough problems. Um, uh, do you want to move on? Like, do like our next thing is not chapter eight. Remember, we still I think it's chapter two that we're gonna go back on to. So we're gonna revisit chapter two. Yeah, chapter two on trigonometry. So we're we're gonna go back. So our, our next our next. Uh, uh, investigation is on trigonometry. Um, so yeah, did we go too fast? Did we do we do enough um, problems? Uh, I guess the next one is: Are we ready to move forward? Okay. Um, so that said, I'm, I'm still going to uh, uh, assign some homework for today. Um, I'll give you just uh, maybe half a dozen questions for you to work on. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I want to know, like, 
was this okay? Like we, let's see. I mean, uh, I can probably look on the YouTube thumbnails and see how, how much time we spent on this chapter. I mean, I don't think it was very long. Let's see, grade 11, pre-cal. So let me just open this video. Um, yeah, like even, even on May 5th, which was like a week ago, on May 5th, we were doing chapter six stuff. So like we spent less than a week on this whole chapter. Um, oh, there's me eating a potato chip. How rude. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, let me know, let me know if you're, if you're ready to move on. Um, I would understand if, if we want to spend a little more time. Um, so something else that we could do is we could, we could kind of go back and forth to the chapters. We can, um, we can do maybe a bit of a review. Um, yeah, let me know, let me know. Okay, one more thing. Review. Do you want to do a review? Uh, let, let me let me know how you're doing. I just want to kind of get get some feedback, right? Like, usually, in class, like in an actual physical classroom, I can look at my students and I can usually tell just by like the expression on your face if you're okay, right? I but I can't can't see you, so you have to type it out for me. You really have to literally spell it out for me. So let me know how you're doing. Um, you know, I think that, that I, I, I was really motivated to move forward through this chapter because I wanted to get through the, the course content. Um, so I went really quickly, but I wonder if maybe I went too quickly. So please let me know if, if we should spend a little more time on it. Um, but I mean, make no mistake, I wasn't, wasn't planning on starting trigonometry tomorrow or anything. I, I still would like to do some review and kind of look at the end of the chapter. The end of the chapter review is, is a good, good unit to do. They've got a practice test and all that kind of thing. Uh, and then we would do another assignment on this material. So it's not like we were, I, I'm ready to just, you know, say goodbye to this material. But I do want to know, like, how are you doing? Just, just let me know. So that's, that's your exit slip today. Um, I'm going to sign out now. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well, um, and I will start marking your assignment uh, today, and hopefully I'll be finished that by the end of the week. So take care. Bye-bye. I'll uh, talk to you guys tomorrow.